like to bring the t meeting of the Township Hamilton Committee to order Monday, August 20th, 2018. Please stand for the flag salute. <clears throat> to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. <clears throat> Adequate notice of this meeting has been provided pursuant to the New Jersey <coughs> Open Public Meetings Law by posting a notice of this meeting on the bulletin board in the municipal building and by publication in the press of Atlantic City on January the 5th, 2018 and the Atlantic County Record on January the 10th, 2018. Mr. Gishard? Present. Mr. Kurtz? Here. Mrs. Link? Mr. Silva? Here. And Mayor Shanker? Here. We have a moment of silence for private <laughs> reflection. Thank you. Uh, our guest presentations, we have a few today. Um, first, we have Senator Chris Brown. He's gonna give us a legislative update. Good evening. Good to see you. Good to see you too. Uh, first of all, I just want to thank you for giving me an opportunity to speak with all of you and speak with everybody here in Hamilton Township. Uh, you know, as an elected person, uh, getting out and making sure you're accessible to everybody is something that I've always valued and thought was important. A lot of times you get elected and you just hide under a rock and then election time you show back up. But we're out, we're accessible, and we're here to answer your residents' questions and so far anybody else has any questions we'll be right outside uh, till about 7 7 30. Um, one of the big issues that have been going on that uh, some of uh, you will have inquired with me is of course NJ Transit and the recent cancellation of the uh, rail service and one of the things that we pointed out both with the Murphy administration as well as the uh, Commissioner Corbett was this affects working families throughout Atlanta County and that uh, we need to make sure that we do everything possible that NJ Transit continues to provide resources, assets, and allocates what we need in order to let our families get to work and earn a living and put food on the table. So we're fortunate today, the first thing that they pointed out was that uh, it is definitely temporary. There is uh, no doubt that they will be reestablishing the rail line in January. Uh, the second thing we pointed out was that they are going to establish express buses so that although you won't have a train taking you to the various stops to Philly, they will have express buses and they will have enough to make sure that demands are met and if anybody needs a, a new bus schedule, they can contact me at my office and I'd be happy to provide it with you. Um, the other thing that I want to thank you for is uh, the opportunity to be here tonight to honor one of our veterans. And uh, I don't want to delay that any further, uh, but I am here to answer any questions you may have uh, before, before we honor one of our own. Seeing no questions, that's all. I, I have a question. Yes, sir. The solicitor. And now the lawyer starts <laughs> growing me. I've got a problem. The, the engineer, the planner, maybe, but the, the lawyer. <laughs> What's the status of the insurance bad faith bill? Uh, so, a lot of the people here may not be aware of what you're talking about specifically, but uh, in the state of New Jersey right now, uh, there's a bill or a law that we're working on to enable people who have been wronged by insurance companies, uh, in particular through Superstorm Sandy or other events, uh, to hold that insurance company in bad faith and to make sure that it gives people the opportunity to have some leverage to make sure that they're treated fairly and you hold the insurance companies and, and the fat cats accountable. And uh, that has passed, uh, it's waiting in the assembly and we don't know for sure if the governor is going to sign it. Thank you. Yes, sir. I've got a question for you. <clears throat> and you know, I was with my friend uh, Rodney, what was it, Sunday? Yeah. Uh -huh. with, uh, Reverend Gandy. Got right. Got a street named after him in Eagle Harbor City. Yes, indeed. I just wanted to ask, with regard to the buses that are replacing the trains, is the schedule going to be the same or, or is that possible? 
Well, it's my understanding that the, the, the problem was holding the schedule the same without increasing the routes would cause too long of a delay for somebody who's taking it from, let's say, Atlantic City to Lindenwald. And so whether it's Absecan, ADCO, Lindenwald, Atlantic City, we're trying to create more direct routes directly to the one stop as opposed to riding the whole uh, distance. Because if you're at the end of either one, you're talking about an additional two hours. And we also were able to get them. There's a 25% discount for those who have to take uh, uh, the buses. Good. Thank you. Yeah, sure. Anyone else? Anyone in the public want to ask a question? Some boy. Thanks for the birthday party. Yeah. I'll tell you, <laughs> we, got a, we got a few in here. I think we got a few. Yes, sir. Well, right now, what, what the gentleman is talking about is uh, there's been a bipartisan task force to try to find ways to make this very more affordable. Um, I've said all along I don't believe it's a, a revenue problem, it's a spending problem. And we need to find ways to make it affordable so people can actually raise a family here and retire someday. One of the things that uh, the, uh, Senate President Sweeney has done is he created a bipartisan uh, committee to look into ways to try to save money. One of the ways that they're coming back with now, and that's where we can look at more than just suggesting it, is to consolidate uh, school districts. See what you did. You, 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 you. <laughs> <laughs> it's glad it's you and not me. Yeah. <laughs> when the pilot was initially approved uh, for Atlantic City, there were a certain number of casinos and a fixed dollar amount for taxes that those casinos had to pay. What happens when you add two new casinos? Well, uh, one of the things, as you recall, when I was fighting this pilot program, saying it's a sweetheart deal for the casinos, done off the backs of all our families, uh, that's one of the issues. As it stands right now, $120 million is still the number that uh, the casinos pay. Thanks. Yes, sir. Hmm. Anyone else? Now, they're, they're, they also have a share that um, goes to the state, which is separate. That, that's their property tax uh, portion. <coughs> thank you. Well, thank you very much, Senator, for coming. Yes, so thank you, Chris. Uh, <coughs> uh, very good. Thank, thank you. you. Right. So that, with that, we'll move on to our honor and remember. Uh, tonight, uh, Mr. George Osby uh, is going to be the one honored. So, Rodney, why don't you come down with me? face the camera see that out there <laughs> <laughs> ladies and gentlemen this is uh, George Osby he was born in Mizpah served in the US Army from 1965 1967 trained combat engineer Fort Bliss Texas he served in Vietnam for 13 months as a machine gunner since his time in, in service he has proven to be dedicated not only to those who also served their nation, but to the members of his community. <coughs> he has served as a past commander of Vietnam Veterans of America, a member of the Veterans of, of Foreign Wars, and the Buffalo Soldiers. During his military service, Mr. Osby received the following awards. Vietnam Service Medal with two campaign stars, Republic of Vietnam Campaign Medal with the Vice, National Defense Service Medal, Combat Infantry Badge and Expert Rifle. Mr. Osby has run the pizza party for the VFW at the Vineland Veterans Home for many years, been active member of the VFW Honor Guard, 
assisted veterans by taking them to their appointments and, and been a community volunteer at summer youth program in Mizpah. Mr. George Osby received the Honor and Member Award on August 20th, 2018. standing up for everybody around you and continuing to give his service to him then when he left the, left the military and continues to stay. So it's an honor for me uh, on behalf of the uh, New Jersey State Senate to present him with the aesthetic uh, commendation, thanking him for his service and uh, letting you know how much we all appreciate you and everything you've done. Thank you so much. That's right, that was a smile. <laughs> Uh, I just want to say uh, I've known George for, well, almost as long as I've been here. Uh, anything associated with the veterans, George has been a part of. Uh, the, some of the things were mentioned, uh, the, uh, the going to the, uh, the veterans in Vineland and providing them with pizza. I don't know how many years he's been doing it, but it's, been, but it's a long time and I know they appreciate it. He's also been out collecting uh, for poppies. And I don't know. Uh, and I do the special service school. I serve them with the kids. And, uh, good job. and a lot of other things. Uh, one of the things he did was uh, we had Mike, our uh, disabled veteran. Uh, he would come to the meetings, and George was the principal person that would bring him to the meetings. And we would, we would carry him up the steps, and he would take him home. Uh, he's just he's our service officer. Uh, he's just been a, a super veteran. Not only a veteran, but to, to other people, to, to the community also. And uh, if I were out in the battlefield, he's clearly the guy I'd want to have with me. Uh, I might also mention that, unfortunately, he's a recipient of Agent Orange and also Shrapnel. And that's had an impact on him, on his health. But he, he moves on, and we really appreciate his service. Yeah, All right. And we're glad to have you here. Thank you. Yes, it is. Okay, uh, let's move on. Item C, we have a citizens group requesting a new ordinance. Anybody sign up? My name is Matt Ristbridge. I live at 930 Morningside Drive. Uh, uh, I'd like to spend 15 minutes of your valuable time discussing okay. the group home on Park Road. Uh, the, uh, 
the presentation I have has some uh, photography and a and a summary. Uh, may I pass it out? Yes. How you doing? Oh, thank you, Matt. You might stay close to the mic so they can all hear you. Thanks, Matt. Thank you. The purpose of, of uh, my discussion is to um, use some of the experience that I have, um, both within my family and within my business, dealing with uh, mentally handicapped people. Um, Grace Risbridge, uh, my sister, is uh, schizophrenic and uh, lives in a uh, uh, group home that is located in Pleasantville. And she, can you hear me okay? Yeah. Um, she came home from Rutgers, New Brunswick when she was 22 uh, with the early signs of schizophrenia. And um, over the next uh, five years, she stayed with my parents and slowly uh, became uh, more and more uh, schizophrenic. And uh, eventually my parents realized that, that they weren't able to uh, handle my sister Grace and they began to look for uh, a group home. And uh, they did find one in Galloway Township that uh, Grace moved to uh, about 25 years ago. And uh, the number of people at that time was uh, 10 in the home but there was uh it was an elderly woman and uh no no supervision so uh over time my sister uh fell off of her medication and when their uh, uh when the medication is not active in her brain she hears voices that tell her to do things so uh at one point uh, the voices told her to jump out the second floor window so she jumped out the second floor window and broke her pelvis, spent a week in the hospital. And then there's other stories that have kind of uh, become humorous over the years um, before she moved into where she's located now. Um, for example, uh, she took a walk and found a van that was running outside a convenience store, uh, thought inappropriate to drive it to Chicago where she was arrested and my brother flew out and flew home with my sister. Uh, shortly thereafter she uh, jumped on a bus headed down to South Carolina and enlisted in the army <laughs> and uh, she's one of eight children. Uh, after two weeks the army realized that she was listening to more than the drill instructor in her mind and they discharged her. Uh, but she is to this day the only Risbridge who uh, served her country. <laughs> um, 20 years ago, Grace uh, moved to PIL at uh, 1309 Main Street in Pleasantville. And there's a picture on page three of what Grace's house looks like. Um, there she. Uh, she, she shares a home with nine other people. There's a total of 10. And uh, for the past 20 years, things have been you know, pretty good with regard to my sister. She's formed family-like relationships with the other nine people that live there. And so um, we're, we're comfortable th with how, how her life is going. It's, it's nowhere near the level of happiness that we <coughs> experience, but it's the best we can do. And um, so I, uh, I look at that experience when I'm sitting at the zoning meeting 
and listening to uh, the application to expand the size of 789 Park Road uh, to what is substantially more than uh, 10 people, which is a large family. Um, from an employment standpoint, about seven years ago, I was contacted by the attorney for a company by, that is a nonprofit that builds these uh, group homes. And their company name is Caring Inc. They were established in 1980 and now have 50 residential structures which they use as group homes and their goal is to integrate four to eight people in each home into a neighborhood seamlessly and they've done so. So on page four you see the property I assessed in 2011 in Northfield and the only thing that you notice that's different than your house or mine is the uh, the handicap ramp that that runs across the front of the property and and maybe a, a large van rather than cars because there's there's as many as eight people living in the house then in 2016 uh, I assessed Deirdre Drive in Egg Harbor Township which is figure which is page five and uh, once again you don't see any signs on the front of the building all you see is a handicap ramp that differentiates that building from any other building on the street. Um, so um, in 2017, they, they did another project in Millville, and I go out ahead of the purchase and make sure there aren't underground storage tanks or uh, leaking heating oil in the ground before they take title, and then they convert it to an exempt status because Caring Inc. is a not-for-profit. But in every case, they put, depending on the size of the building, four to eight people. So now they have 50 houses and 300 people like my sister Grace over this long period of 38 years. Uh, when, when I was researching to get the information for these photographs, I noticed that Caring purchased and converted a property in the Cloverleaf section of Mays Landing one year before I started working for them. Um, 5905 Buttercup Lane is the same deal, you know, a, uh, uh, a rancher, they, they prefer single story houses, maybe they heard Grace's story, uh, and you see a van out in front of the building and uh, no signage and, and people living their lives free and easy. So. That's what I do with <coughs> Caring Inc. And, and with my family and, and my sister Grace. Now, um, in 2011, the Christie administration, uh, reacting to a Supreme Court ruling, began to close the uh, large state-run uh, mental health institutions, including the Vineland Developmental Center. And, and part of their plan was to do exactly what Caring Inc. is doing. So they're trying to integrate people. Instead of just giving them a, a, a bed and, and three square meals, they, they get depressed, they take more drugs, and they sleep all the time and they die young. Uh, the Supreme Court ruled that their citizens, American citizens with disabilities, they deserve the same rights that all of us have. And so the Christie administration, in the process of doing that, uh, released half of the 3,000 people into group homes. Um, at some point in that 2011 to 2013, they removed the requirement that you only have 10 people in a group home, essentially a large family. So the reason that they integrated people are integrating people from these these homes into uh, into residential communities is to avoid what the mental health community calls warehousing, which is essentially just s storing them away until they pass away. Uh, so my, uh, my thought with regard to the Park Road uh, application is there, there should be some number 
of mentally handicapped people in the facility that resembles a family, whether it's a small family or a large family, a family. Uh, Grace's facility at PIL involves 10 mentally disabled in a not-for-profit setting. Caring Inc.'s model is four to eight uh, members plus staff in a not-for-profit operation. These are proven over, in my sister's case, 20 years, in Caring's case, 38 years, as the way to handle this problem. Um, the current owners of, or the previous owners of 789 Park Road had as many as 19 members plus staff. The current owner of 789 that's making the application to the zoning board has currently 28 members plus staff in a for-profit uh, business operation. And the planned expansion of 789 Park Road would increase the number of members to 66 members. So, you know, when you, when you see something, say something, is what crosses my mind based on my experience with my sister and Caring Inc. You know, there are serious health and safety concerns that will result from the municipality allowing this developer to proceed with that number of people in a single, and, and this is proven because that's why they closed the Vineland Developmental Center. The, the correct way to approach this is to do what PIL, Pro Project for Independent Living, where my sister lives, or what Caring Inc. is doing. So um, what, what will happen over time is that um, people will be listening to the voices because nobody's there to tell them, hey, you forgot to take your medicine today, Grace or whoever that person is, and out the window they go. Uh, the, the biggest problem with these facilities is cleanliness. People who are on these heavy drugs, they lose that ability and bed bugs take over the facility, at which point the whole facility has to be evacuated. How would you go about doing that? These are health and safety concerns, not, not for the residents of Mays Landing. The residents would have probably <clears throat> some reduction in property value with 66 mentally handicapped people all concentrated in one area. The people that are really hurt by this are gonna be the 66 people in the building. Their health and their safety is going to be a serious problem that the municipality will eventually incur costs as a result of. Uh, the, the obvious solution is for an ordinance that would recognize that this will occur and reduce the number of uh, uh, members that can live at 789 Park Road to something closer to what uh, a large family is. My, my family growing up was eight children plus my parents. That was, we were the biggest family, we had the biggest house because there were so many of us. There might be one guy I know that had 12 members in his family, but still, that's 14, not 28 to 66. Um, finally, years ago, uh, I spoke to the committee about uh, a power plant that was proposed in a residential neighborhood. And the solution to uh, stop that from happening was to pass an ordinance that outlawed power plants, power generation, but there was a legal uh, hook that the attorney for the applicant was using to call the power plant a substation, and by law, it would have to be approved. The municipality could not stand in the way. The ordinance stopped that. What we need in this case is a similar ordinance to limit the number of people. We don't want the, uh, the developer to walk away but we must limit the number of residents to something close to the Caring Inc. or PIL model. Um, 
And, uh, and I think that that is necessary for the health and safety of the residents of that building. We want this applicant to provide housing for mentally handicapped people because we struggled for a long time to find a place for Grace. The 66 people need to be in seven houses in different areas of the municipality or other muni municipalities, not in one house. Thank you for your time. Do you have thank any you. questions? Thank you. First of all, thank you for this. This was quite an education and I appreciate you coming in tonight and, and sharing this with us. Um, Bob, do you have any comments towards this or are we? May I go over here? Yeah, I have to be very careful how I address this. <laughs> first of all full disclosure I live in this neighborhood these people are my neighbors and my friends but my obligation is to you and to them to provide you with guidance the first thing I would recommend to the four of you tonight is because there is a pending application before the Zoning Board of Adjustment you should not provide any comment because it could be perceived by a court as taking some affirmative step. Because members of the zoning board, some are present, all of them could view this on television, and that would be evidence outside of the record. So I would urge you to accept my advice and not comment with respect to the good or the bad thoughts you may have about what's happening here. And the other thing I would say to you, Matt, is I'm very familiar with the power plant issue because I litigated it. I was not the municipal solicitor at the time. I represented the objector. I went before the planning board. We provided expert testimony and we lost. They approved it as a substation. I appealed that. During the appeal, I urged the then governing body to amend the ordinance to do exactly what you just said, and they did. But what you all need to know is that at that time, it was called the time of decision rule, which meant that when the ultimate decision was made, whatever law was in effect at that time would control. In 2011, the statute was amended to say that the controlling law is that which exists at the time the application is made. So the ability to do here what we were able to do at the power plant. And it turned out to be a good result for the town, for the township. That ability does not exist under the current status of the law. There is a, an exception which has not been articulated by the courts in any jurisprudence that I'm aware of um, that talks about health and personal safety issues. Um, I can't answer that. I became aware of this on Thursday um, and did some research over the weekend with respect to it. So whether or not an ordinance could be developed under that exception, I cannot tell you. I can tell you that in my search for law interpreting that language in the statute, and I'll, I'll read it to you. This was amended May the 5th of 2011. Notwithstanding any provisions of law to the contrary, those development regulations which are in effect on the date of the submission of an application for development shall govern review of that application for development. Any decision made with regard to the application for development. So in other words, the law is what it is on the day it was submitted. But it goes on to say, any provision of any ordinance except those relating to health and public safety that are adopted subsequent to the date of submission of an application for development shall not be applicable to that application for development. So the remedy that existed under the power plant issue does not exist unless it can fit within that minor narrow exception. And I'm not sure that's a zoning issue. Um, I've had discussions with planners. Uh, there's no definitive answer to that question. Um, and that's just the extent of my research so far. So I, I again really need you to understand and I'm sorry to my neighbors and my friends if you 
really don't like what I'm saying, but my duty is here. And if they were to comment on Matt's very well-spoken statements, that could provide a basis for some appellate relief to the applicant that you're trying to limit. And that's my advice to you. Thank you. Thank you, Bob. <clears throat> Once again, I can't thank you enough for coming in and, and bringing this to our attention and, and is being giving us the knowledge that we have now is, is, is a big deal. And um, like you see, Bob is looking into it. Thank you. Thank you. Move on to item one, additions and deletions of late agenda items to be considered for action. I believe we have one. So moved. Second. Motion, motion is second. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 All those opposed, the ayes have it. Early public comment on agenda items, excluding items listed for public hearings. Michael. We have one. Dave Blood wants to talk about Tavistock Streets. <clears throat> Good evening. Uh, my name is Dave Blood. I live at 154 Marucci Place in Tavistock here at Mays Landing. I'm here to ask this body, what is the status of the streets that have never received the final top coat? Uh, I happen to live on one. I look at this street and I realize the substrate is deteriorating. And the longer we wait, the less time we have this year to have it approved, go out to bid, have the bids come in approved. You know, the process takes time, and we're going to have a window closing because of weather as far as being able to pave these streets. My concern is, and of course, when the place was built, and here's a disclosure, when the first two sections of Tavistock received their final code of paving, I was on the Tavistock Board of Directors at that time. I no longer am. And that was part of the developer's commitment to finish as, as the different phases were finished. Now, phase three and phase four. I live in phase four. Obviously, we're never done for all the reasons that you, you could talk about, and I'm not gonna get into that tonight. My concern is that having lived on a street in another township where they wouldn't send in the street sweeper because they were afraid it would sweep up the entire street. That's how bad it was. But there was a reason for that. But my concern is, is there any possibility of all of this taking place? I understand we're waiting for a judge's decision or a hearing or something like that. And I, I understand how the courts are like molasses in January or even slower. But something needs to be done so that these streets are paved before the substrate crumbles, and then we're talking about big bucks to do the whole job. Do we have anything? Bob, how about you? Bob, can you give us an update, I please? <coughs> I filed a motion that was decided by Judge Savio in the Superior Court, and the motion was granted, and in it, I sought a hearing to approve the settlement. That hearing is now scheduled in September, I think the 20th, Second, I'm not quite sure of the date, but that's when the hearing is. And all of you are going to get a notice from your board of directors outlining what the settlement provisions are. I drafted that notice. It was agreed upon by your council and also the bond council. So, and, and I would encourage you to speak to your board of directors to get those notices out right away because you don't want to delay that hearing. If at that hearing anybody is in favor of the settlement, it's a $650,000 settlement, which I am told is adequate funds to complete the two roads in the two phases that were not done, go, testify, send an affidavit. Those of you who are opposed, you are invited as well. At that hearing, if the testimony and the proofs go in the way that I expect it and the way that your counsel expects it, we hope that the judge will approve the settlement. Mr. Philippone's firm has graciously begun the work to do the contract documents with no promise that they'll ever be paid. Um, because if it's not approved, it's not approved. We go back to the litigation. 
Um, that's a showing of good faith on behalf of our engineer to try and get the contract documents done so that the bids can go out before the cold weather comes. I have done everything in my power to expedite the process. His firm, Steve Philippone's firm, has done more than that. Um, I expect that the more support I get and your lawyer gets at that hearing, the more likely Judge Savio will be to grant it. And once it's granted, it's up to our engineer to do the contract documents, get the bids out, and if that can go out in October, the work can be done in November, that's what we're trying to do. Okay, though, September 22nd. I'm not sure the date. Oh, you're uh, not Dave. sure, okay. Where will this be held? In the Superior Court in Atlantic City. Okay. Uh, 1201 Bacharach Boulevard, for all of you that don't know where that is. In there. And Judge Savio's on the third floor. Um, and knowing him as I do, and having tried lots of cases in front of him, um, he is fairly quick in, in coming to his conclusions in most cases. And I suspect he might even do a ruling from the bench that day. See, I'm speaking here, Bob, because my concern of the, you're talking timelines here. You're talking the closing of a window when asphalt can be successfully applied. If we have an early cold, an early winter, that shortens the window. Sure does. And I really am concerned about the condition of the streets going through another, if we have another winter like we did last year with the constant freeze, thaw, freeze, thaw, it wreaks havoc with the streets, especially the first two sections, two phases, are complete. But the two phases that have not been completed, the uh, substrate was not designed to be open this long. And that's, that's my concern. And our engineer has looked at that and has made recommendations with respect to that. Um, I, I can tell you that I can't move any faster than I am. Steve's firm is moving faster than they should be. Um, at their own time and expense at this mm -hmm. point. So our goal, our collective goal, is to get it done before the winter comes. Yeah, and I, I, I appreciate that. And I also understand the uh, problem you have with how the courts proceed at their own rate of speed. That they, I realize there's nothing you guys can do about this. We, well, got, we have a date. I, I consider it a firm date. Mm -hmm. Again, I can't impress upon you enough to contact your board of directors so that they will send out those notices. They have to be certified and regular. Mm -hmm. There has to be a notice paste in the Atlantic City Press and the local pr paper. Um, and it has to be posted on the bulletin board in your uh, community building. Who's responsible for the legal? For the legal? Is there a legal ad involved in this? Yeah, your association is. So the association is? But it's not a lot of money. I'm not, I'm, not, I'm not worried about that. You'll spend, spend more on certified mail than you will on We spent the enough money on this already. Uh, illegal, but I, I, we don't know. So the township is not responsible for the legal. The homeowners association is? Yes. Okay. Do they know that? Yes. Okay. Um, you should take a look at the settlement document. And I, I can't, I can address you, Dave, here because... I represent these gentlemen, mm -hmm. and I can't address you privately because you have counsel. Um, well, I understand. I understand all that. Uh, I was just wondering, from your point of view, you've given me what I've asked for, and I realize that, you know, it is what it is. But is September September twenty second a firm date? If that is the date, I consider it, yes. I don't want to mislead you on the date. I wish I had it here so I could tell you for sure. Oh, okay, okay. And I don't know how to work my phone well enough to get into my computer, or I would do it right now. Would you let me know? I will. <laughs> okay. Um, but I think, no, I, I can't let you know. No, I really Call, call Mark Wiesnick. I almost got you. No, you did. Yeah. I, I mean, I, I can let you know the date, sure. Call my office. And that's as much as I'll talk to you about. Oh, yes, Susie. Okay. Okay. But again, you say you spent a lot of money. What you folks need to understand is that the township spent a whole lot more than you did on, with me and, and with others to get this done for you because the township is the only one to whom the bond obligation runs. I understand that. I'm not, believe me, I'm not faulting <clears throat> township committee. I'm not faulting you. I'm not faulting you. I'm faulting, I know that a process has gone awry here, and I think I know the reasons, but I'm not following you guys. But I was just simply hoping 
that I get it here. Well, it's going to be an earlier date for the hearing. You know what? Maybe I can figure this out. <laughs> Give me a moment. Go ahead. Could, could, could I jump in while he's looking sure. at that? Sure. Yes, Steve, please. Um, to, at the last committee meeting, it, it was a request that, you know, with you, two uh, of your committee persons on your board, if they could meet with me, and I, I scheduled a meeting. I'm actually meeting them tomorrow to mm -hmm. show them the, the, the final plans and, and to make some real basic decisions on where, where does the gate go, where the fences are going to be located, just some of those little details. And, but the plans are, are substantially done. So I, I've moved ahead. Uh, fences? Any of the details on the plans. Oh, okay. uh, I got a couple of sidewalk repairs I want to make, but I, I just, the, the, the entire entrance way, I'm, I'm going to redo that entire entrance way. Okay. We're not taking any risk, any chances. I, the, the plans are complete, and I just want to go over the details. They, they requested a meeting with me. So tomorrow I'm going to walk the job with them and meet them. And I guess if they invite you, you're, you know, it's, it's up to up to your board. But I, I'm happy to show you all the work we've done. No, I, I appreciate it. You've been very, very clear and transparent with, with me personally previously, and I appreciate it. But we missed last month. We got coming back from vacation. We got kind of out of sync on when the meetings were held, and we missed the last one. The, the meeting is scheduled at 2.30 p.m., on September the 21st, on the third floor of the Atlantic City Civil Courthouse, 1201 Bacharach Boulevard, and the presiding judge will be Judge James Savio. So September 21, 2.30 p.m. Friday, it's a Friday afternoon. Okay. I'll be there and I hope to see as many of you there as possible, particularly if you're in support of it. Will they have stamped parking at the New York Avenue? No, parking? <laughs> they won't. Well, you can try. <laughs> All right. Thanks a lot. I appreciate it. And again, appreciate everything you're trying to do for uh, the community, and hopefully we get this resolved this year. Thank you, Dave. So do we. <laughs> Anyone else, Mike? <laughs> okay, we'll move on to discussions. Formal action may be taken. Uh, first item A, participation in the Gypsy Moth Survey Program. Um, we received our annual letter asking if we want to participate in the survey. I don't see any reason why we wouldn't. Right. Um, there's no cost to it. Um, they'll come back and make a recommendation whether treatment is needed, and if it is, there's a cost to that. Okay. So um, I recommend we move forward with it. We need a motion to move forward with that? I'll motion. make that motion. Second. We have a motion and second. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 All those opposed? The ayes have it. Let's move on to B, resolution designating the entirety of Tam Ham Township of Hamilton as an area of need of, re of rehabilitation. Uh, Phil, you want to speak on this? Thank you, Mayor. Um, last month, uh, the committee referred to the planning board this resolution, which would designate the entire township an area in need of rehabilitation. Um, that was reviewed by the planning board, Steve, what was it, the last second meeting in July, right? Yes. Mm -hmm. July, and they uh, unanimously uh, re recommended it as drafted for adoption. Uh, by designating the township as an area in need of rehabilitation, it opens a couple doors for uh, the governing body and the residents. Uh, first, it would allow for amending the uh, ordinance that allows for tax abatements and exemptions to widen the area or areas that are eligible to benefit from that either uh, and again as uh, Mr. Maley says you know you've got a lot of options with that it can right. be strictly uh, for rehabilitation projects it could be for new construction so it, it broadens that secondly it would allow uh, where appropriate to uh, come up with individual redevelopment plans for specific properties or areas to encourage uh, the, you know, the revitalization expenditure of, of capital on the private side and revitalization and development. So it, it, it starts giving you more options as far as encouraging uh, growth in the township. Okay. So this is, since we did two of them here, this is the sec first step for this one? This, if you adopt this resolution, uh, it gets forwarded to the Department of Community Affairs. Right. Uh, the commissioner would would respond as saying yes, it's in effect. Okay. And then from that point, you you can 
take other steps as as you deem appropriate. But this okay. is the, would be last action dealing with this specific resolution. And Phil, if I remember correctly, uh, even at the last meeting, uh, members of committee and the mayor, we decided that uh, we thought that uh, w we should have an emphasis on getting this out to the public uh, by holding some, uh, like the, we did the strategic sure. planning meetings in different areas uh, uh, to get the public the ability to come out and understand this whole program better. Yes, we're uh, working with uh, Steve and Mr. Maley's office Mr. to put Maley's that stuff office, together. Yeah. Yes. Okay, great. I just wanted to make sure that was still on target. Yeah, he had a similar meeting like that down in Cape May. Yes. Correct. Mr. Maley, yeah, he was yeah. there for about two and a half hours answering questions. He right. was in the paper the other day. So. so we would do the same thing. Just so everybody understands, mm -hmm. we're at a part now where um, if, if we vote to move this forward, we would then, the next step would be, as Mr. Malley calls it, the a la carte part, um, where there is a list of different things that we can or cannot do, and we kind of custom build it for this township. It it's, doesn't necessarily mean we're doing everything that another town did or didn't do. So we can custom build it for what we want to see, uh, how we want to see it, uh, uh, tax ab abatements if, if we deem necessary. Uh, it gives us a lot of control on how to mold this thing and that would be the next step for us and then that would then be brought to the public and and our attorney that we've hired Mr. Malley would would have that would talk about that so everybody understands before we move forward from there thank you Phil okay. so to move this forward we're going to need a motion so moved. second I have a motion and a second all those in favor signify roll, by roll call, please. Roll call, please. Sure. <clears throat> Rita, roll call, please. Mr. Bichard? Yes. Mr. Kurtz? Yes. Mr. Silva? Yes. Mayor Shanker? Yes. All yes and carry. Uh, number four public hearing, adoption of ordinances. We are ordinance 1883 2018, an ordinance amending chapter 173, flood damage prevention, and ordinance. 1877-2018. This is a public hearing. Anybody in the public wish to speak? Can you get an explanation, please? Sure. Bill? Uh, this ordinance is really technical corrections to the, right. the flood prevention ordinance. Mm -hmm. um, we sent it, the ordinance that was adopted up to DEP for review. Uh, prior to the new maps becoming effective next Tuesday. Uh, there were a couple items where they've changed the language from the draft that we were working with, some additional language they wanted us to change from the information that was in there. So it's mm -hmm. really just the technical part of it. The, the new mapping has, has been prepared and is available. There's no change to that. So, uh, you know. But Phil, but, I, I understand too, is just for the public's sake, that uh, these maps <clears throat> some of the changes that were affected could be that property that was a that was currently listed in a flood zone could not be in a flood zone sure. any longer and possibly a property that uh, needs to be designated to be in the flood zone so that's correct, that's correct. Um, you know th there will be changes uh, again the information we got from DP and they only provide information for the title portion along the river uh, I think they said there'd be like a, uh, you know, 120 properties coming out and 40 going in. So there, there is a, yeah, uh, a, a switch that way. Give and take there. Uh, effective after the 28th, uh, residents, if they think they may need flood insurance or covered by flood insurance, can go to the FEMA's online to the FEMA's National Map Center. They have an online tool. You can type in your address and it will tell you if you're in uh, in a flood hazard area, we have copies of the maps in the flood study in our office also that, that are available for viewing. And uh, will the public be able to come into town hall yeah. and, and ask about that information? Sure. That's too? not a problem. Okay, very good. Are the people who may be affected uh, being notified about this or is, it, is that up to them to uh, investigate? It's, it's it? gotta be up to the uh, individual property owners because I mean the flood areas cover you know, throughout the township, uh, not just along the river, but also following stream corridors and, and wetlands areas 
all the way up to uh, you know the Hamilton boundary. Uh, it's several hundred properties would, that are affected by it. Well, maybe we should be alerting the public to the fact that uh, people should be looking, because I'm sure there are people out there that may not be looking. Well, we'll put it out there. Yeah, we'll put it on. So everybody understands this ordinance has already been voted on previously. We sent it in, and there was some 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 changes technical changes that need to be made so this is just the new version that we're going to uh well we have a motion we can i'll make a motion to pass the ordinance oh, 18 sorry, hold, on, hold on hold on hold on hold on oh yeah we'll close the public portion first public hearing does anybody like to speak i'm joe corbo uh, 30 at uh, 40 gasco road base landing and part of tavistock this somewhat confuses me when he said you are not going to notify especially those people that were not in a flood zone and now that are i know where i am it's not considered a flood zone but if i was three blocks away from where it had flooded two months ago and all of a sudden at that point up to that point i was not in a flood zone and with the new maps, say I'm in a flood zone, I think those people should be notified. And the town should do that. I think that is one of the responsibilities of this township committee and the, the board or the uh, tax collector or whoever takes care of that, or the engineering department, should notify these people. I know it's not going to affect, I feel it's not going to affect me, but I'm just saying, hey, if I was there and all of a sudden I say, hey, you have to put another $1,000 out for flood insurance because they changed the maps. You know, I'm sorry, but that's just my feeling on it. Okay. It's, I just felt that, hey, there might be another, other people here that have questions and are scared to get up and Roger knows. I'm here and I'll, I will say things if I feel that I'm against it. And so, to, all right. I thank you very much for listening to me. Thank but you. That's thank you. my opinion on that. Bill, you're going to notify these folks? Thank you. Done. See how easy it is? I'd like to reinforce what Mr. Corbo said. My name's Harry Rogers, 1069 Morningside. Uh, a change in the designation of a property's uh, flood status has dramatic effects on the property value, flood insurance, mm -hmm. a whole host of issues. And I really think that uh, to go through and pass this without notifying these people that uh, give them a chance for rebuttal if necessary, uh, because once it's passed, it's done. Now, you say this is a, a technical correction on a past ordinance. I don't make all the meetings, but I don't remember seeing this before. This has been up. Yeah. I'm sure, I'm sure, I'm not doubting. The only reason it's here tonight is because the state did not like the way it was written and well, it got changed. They asked us for an amendment. I, I, would, I would urge the board to do what you said a minute ago to uh, Mr. Sartorio. Please, please notify the people who, who are going to experience a change in their status. Mm -hmm. Everybody will be happier. So we don't. This isn't something that we have a choice in, is it? I was under the understanding that these maps are made, and it's, the maps have been out in preliminary or, or draft form since roughly uh, 2013, when they came out as right. the preliminary ones, right after yeah. Hurricane Sandy. Uh, FEMA's, you know, put out the, the information. Uh, it's had numerous articles and, and uh, public meetings and had oppor there was opportunity actually in 2014 for people to uh, you know, they were notified by FEMA because they're the ones running the program right as far as any changes or corrections uh, again uh, we're required to adopt them so that the property owners in the township can qualify for federal flood insurance okay uh, that's that's a reason, real reason why we we've Correct. we've adopted these maps. Yes. Phil, do you have any approximate idea of how many people might be impacted by this? Uh, just the ballpark. Uh, Not off the top of my head. 
as far as um, again total amount in and out no not really uh, so are we talking tens or, or or hundreds not hundreds I hope probably several hundred properties several hundred properties be notified yeah I mean it, if we're going to do it you know again uh, we're going to let people know if their property is no longer in because uh, their status has changed yep. also that if properties are added but uh, the people so that, that were added were notified by FEMA or no that I have no idea okay. if, if they've provided that notice. Okay. Well, so we'll, we'll provide the notice. Yeah. That's fine. The people currently uh, acquiring flood insurance, wouldn't they be uh, notified that they no longer are required to have it through the company, through the insurance provider? Probably not. Well, the mortgage company is the one that would require them to, to carry flood insurance uh, if they're in there. Um, <coughs> I, you know, that would be up to to their mortgage company to say yes or no uh and just oh, because I, just because you're not in a flood hazard area doesn't mean you know they won't sell you flood insurance also their rate would go down if they're not in a flood hazard area you would get what's, what they would call a preferred rate as opposed to being in a in a flood zone is that automatic what's that the, the rate reduction would that be automatic that or? i'm not an insurance expert mr Gishard, but uh, uh again it, it you you would think that they would look at the new mapping well, I wouldn't want my mortgage company to be the one that uh, to tell me that my that we're in a flood zone now. Up on that, if, if I were a property owner, Mike, is there anything that we can do through? The, what can we do through the township to notify the residents uh, that are have been changed by this? Well, I, I have to talk with Phil to see if they're how, how we go about identifying them. Okay. I don't, yeah. Sitting here, I don't know how we identify. Okay. Yeah, as we, long as that's what yeah, we we could pull it together. I mean, again, we've been provided um, the uh, federal mapping not only in the paper copies that that and and the digital versions directly from FEMA, but through the DEP, they've also given us on a GIS layer so that we can look yeah, at that and compare it and go from there to, to okay. work with the assessor's office to generate an address list. Okay. Bob, can we can we approve this ordinance uh, and not have and include a caveat that uh, the discussion we just had of notifying the residents? As I understand it, this ordinance, in some form other than the current form, has already been adopted. Correct. Yes. And Phil, this is a question of you. Um, this the changes in the amended ordinance is not going to change the people who are affected one way or the other in terms of specific properties on the map correct so if you were not in a flood insurance a flood zone and the prior ordinance put you in one that's done the amendments here I haven't studied this but what I'm learning now here tonight is not going to change the effect of the previously adopted ordinance putting someone on notice of this now who has already been affected is not an effective tool to accomplish what i think you want to accomplish how the law works is that we operate in a system where um, some state agency had hearings on this it was published public meetings the results of which were in a decision that was published. All of that is on notice to the world. Um, we here had a, a printed agenda, a public hearing for introduction, or introduction and then a public hearing. That is the way notice is provided in the development of an ordinance or a law. In a, in a perfect world, would it be better if we had done something by saying, hey, Next month, we're going to look at this thing. Your property's affected where you used to be in a non-flood zone and are now in a flood zone? Sure, that would be wonderful. But you can't do that in, in respect to the ordinances that you pass across the board. Now, could you have done it in, in this before the last ordinance was adopted? I suppose. But if this is just cleaning up what has already been adopted, you're inviting people to come here and talk on something that would be ineffective. 
so I, I, I hear what you're saying, and as a property owner, I, I would try to keep abreast of things like this as it affected my property, and it's in public notice, and it's at public hearings, and that's how we operate as a representative government. So could you delay this? Sure. Could you further publish it and go give notice to the 40 people who are now in a flood zone who weren't? Sure. If you could identify them. Um, unless you're going to rescind the old ordinance, it's meaningless. Right. So would you clarify something? I, I, I thought originally that as a result of these changes, people who weren't in the flood zone before are now in the flood zone. But you're saying that's not true. No, no the, 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 the new maps mm -hmm. that were in the original ordinance and are still referred to in this ordinance, mm -hmm. those are the changes. They've, they've already been... Um, since 2013, they've been out to the public. FEMA's provided notice to the public, uh, invited them to come in and review the maps as much okay. as possible. We would we would ask people to look at the maps through our office, um, and you know FEMA had their public comment period. I think it ended closed in 2014. Okay, then these technical changes we're talking about. These technical changes that are in this ordinance itself <clears throat> were as far as the process for when somebody comes in to develop and, right. and they're building as far as uh, you know what the flood flood administrator has to review the type of information provided uh things of those that nature but it's not changing the status not changing the maps all right well that's right. That, so that chapter 173 uh is just for flood damage protection that's, that's the it, only yes. area was touched because i remember quite well from the ds uh when we talked about this, this was the public, it was opened up to the public. They had the ability to address it and we announced at more than one meeting that the map was available and we gave the website address for them to go on to see if their property was in that. Uh, and uh, I believe that we, we did our due diligence at that time to make sure that uh, people had the ability to go on to see it and, and to come into town hall to review the map if they could. So I, I guess the question is, is there anything more well, that the township could do to make those people aware? And this occurred, you said, several years ago. What did you yes, say? It's, it's occurred, occurred over a oh, period of time. I mean, as, as a courtesy of the residents, will we, if somebody's now in that wasn't in before, will we let them know? Yeah, we, we can send an information out saying, okay. as, as of such but, and such a date, your property is now in a flood hazard area. But it provides them with no due process. No. I, I understand, understand it. I just yeah. feel as though, as these gentlemen <clears throat> said, it's the right thing to do and just let them know that mm -hmm. in case they didn't know. Um, but you understand that you're letting them know after the fact. The public notice was given. You have complied with your obligations under the statutes in terms of how you effectuate laws. Imagine if you're changing a zoning ordinance that affects a whole bunch of folks. There's no way you can notify everybody that's changed on a municipal-wide zoning law. Understood. And there's no legal requirement to do so in most cases. So I'm telling you, you have complied with the law on notice. I'm telling you that if you want to notify these people, that's fine. But it has no legal impact on anything. Okay. And I'm not familiar with how these maps are created, but I know. <clears throat> They weren't created by us. Yeah, they weren't. No, and that's clear. Um, why don't we, do we need a motion to, to send notification or do we just? No. Can it, that can be administratively done. Okay. okay. So we can approve this motion tonight because this is just an amendment to a chapter that doesn't affect anything else that they're talking about. If my understanding is correct, and Phil's representations are correct. It is not making any property which is heretofore not in a flood zone in a flood zone or vice versa, because that's already been done. Okay. Can I, I'll go ahead with my motion then. Uh, Got to close the public portion. Public. We need to close. Motion First of all, yeah. Phil, I, and I don't want to speak for the whole committee. If anybody has a problem, I feel as though we should do it. I have the sense. Just put I, out a I friendly reminder. Yeah. We don't have a problem with notification. Are you guys okay? That's fine. Absolutely. Rodney? Move to close the public portion. The, the, second. My, my, all, right, all right. We have a motion and a second to close the public portion. 
All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 All those opposed? Need a motion to adopt. I'll make a motion to adopt Ordinance 1823-2018, an ordinance amending Chapter 173 of the Flood Damage Preve uh, Prevention and Ordinance. Second. Number 11877-2018. I second it. Your motion is second. Roll call vote, Rita. Okay. And just for the record, it's Ordinance 1883. Thank you. Mr. Gishard? <laughs> yes. Mr. Kurtz? Yes. Mr. Silva? Yes. Mayor Shanker? Yes. All yes and adopted. Thank you. Number five, introduction of ordinances. Public hearing to be held September 4, 2018. Uh, ordinance 1884-2018, a bond ordinance appropriating $650,000 and authorizing the ensuance of $617,500 in bonds or notes to the Township of Hamilton for capital improvements or purposes authorized to be undertaken by the Township of Hamilton in the County of Atlantic, New Jersey. Mike? The, uh, as you know, we passed a resolution setting up a trust account. The state rejected that, said we can't set up a trust account. So in order to do this, the roads and Tavistock, we had to set up a bond ordinance. Okay. It, it segregates the money and keeps it, it'll be funded by the bond, or by the, the so bond So this is proceeds. the vehicle that that money will come through Yes. It'll be funded by the settlement process. Yes. 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 Okay. I'm, I'll move to introduce that ordinance. I'll second it. We have a motion and a second to introduce Ordinance 1884-2018. Rita, could we have a roll call vote, please? Mr. Gishard? <coughs> yes. Mr. Kurtz? Yes. Mr. Silva? Yes. Mayor Shanker? Yes. All yes and introduced. Thank you. Six, award bids, contracts, and change orders. A resolution authorizing acceptance of proposal from Engineering Design Associates for Surveying Services, Block 730, Lot 8, not to exceed $1,200. So moved. Second. Mike, you want to let everybody know what this is all about? Uh, the budding property owner to some land that we own um, believes that his property may extend over to what we believe we own. So we need to determine that property line. Okay. Uh, it's rather important piece of access. For the survey, we have to With do the survey. Yeah, sure. We have a motion and a second. Rita, can we get a roll call vote, please? Mr. Gishard? Yes. Mr. Kurtz? Yes. Mr. Silva? Yes. Mayor Shanker? <clears throat> yes. All yes and carry. Consent agenda. I'll make a motion to approve uh, the consent agenda, agenda items A through G, which is the one that was added on our late list. I'll second it. We have a motion and a second. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 All those opposed? The ayes have it. Number eight, personnel, we have nothing. Number nine, approvals. Uh, minutes of the regular meeting, August 6, 2018. So moved. Second. We have a motion and a second. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 All those opposed? The ayes have it. Minutes of the executive session, August 6, 2018. So moved. Second. We have a motion and second. Rita, can we get a roll call vote, please? Mr. Kishard? Yes. Mr. Kurtz? Yes. Mr. Silva? Yes. Mayor Shanker? Yes. All yes and carry. Thank you. Payroll and bills. Bill list total $2,315,233.09. So moved. Second. We have a motion and a second. Rita, roll call vote, please. Mr. Kishard? Yes. Mr. Kurtz? Yes. Mr. Silva? Yes. Mayor Shanker? Yes. All yes and carry. Thank you. We'll move on to the reports. Mr. Administrator. Uh, nothing to add to the written report. Okay. Thank you. Mr. Solicitor. Nothing to report. Mr. Engineer. <coughs> I have a number of items to discuss. The first is the uh, road program. The plans are now complete. We're going to be advertising next week for bids. Um, we're, we're scheduling bid opening on September 11th. And hope to award a contract on if things move nicely we hope to award a contract on september 17th at that committee meeting so they, that will be out to bid next next week it'll be advertised that's great all right thank you um i want to talk about construction projects the first construction project that i want to talk about is buffalo pike associates again you see progress there on the black horse pike that's that first building is a 13,000 square foot building with a starbucks on one end and, and a mattress store in the other. I spoke to Matt Oates today. He still will not give up who's going to be in the middle. 
Um, he says there's been a little bit, little bit more activity on the 9,000 square foot building. They're getting that pad site ready, but they haven't pulled a construction permit for that building. So um, they're forging ahead and, and hope to have the, the building that you see under construction completed sometime around Thanksgiving is what he told me today. The history of working with Benderson well, when we cut the ribbon is that the reason they don't comment on who's going to be in the middle is they don't have anybody there. <laughs> do you, do you, could you tell us whether that's a one-story or two-story? Uh, it, it's a one-story building. One story. One story. That looks pretty high, do Yeah. yeah. Um, Parmar Liquor Store, which is also labeled as Hardy Liquor Store, which was the old Guy Tunney's property. They, they had a, um, a issued a temporary CO and that, that uh, liquor store is now open next to the McDonald's. Did they have a grand opening? They're, they're, uh, they have a lot of punch list items to clean up. They're working towards it, but okay. we should hear something soon. Outback Steakhouse had a pre-construction meeting last Wednesday. Yeah. They're scheduled to start construction one week from today. And they are on a fast track. Um, their Outback Steakhouse in Egg Harbor Township needs to close by February. So this one needs to be open by February. Good. I'll be um, glad to see that piece of property developed. Yeah, me too. Yeah. I'll be um, glad to see Outback State there. <laughs> <laughs> yes. yeah. um, McDonald's was issued their permanent CO last week. They requested it and they received a permanent CO. So uh, Karen Tra thanks the, the committee and the planning board for all their help. Um, last Wednesday, we had a bid opening for the chiller. Um, the, the low bid came in at $110,165, which was con considerably under the um, $150,000 estimate that, that was put on that project. So um, we're, we're just finalizing the recommendation and expect, you know, expect to have a letter of recommendation and, and, and next committee meeting, maybe we could authorize a contract on, on the low bid there. Um, I have a notation here, Cedarcroft and, and Redwood. If you remember in the spring, there was a uh, water main break at the intersection of Cedarcroft and Redwood. Um, the, the, the repairs had been made quite a while ago to, to the uh, domestic water system. We allowed that intersection to sort of settle over the summer. N next week, um, contract, contract has been awarded to uh, do the paving at that intersection, and that's going to be handled by the uh, MUA's contract, so next week that intersection will be repaved. Um, emergency generator, we, um, we've been working with Janney Electric and Cummins Power, and just today we came to a decision on how to do the restoration work. This is the, uh, the fuel tank on the top of the uh, emergency generator has sort of an indentation, and, and water's been laying on it for the last two years, and there's a little bit of rust that's shown up. We've um, I'm wor I've worked with Janney Electric and, 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 and Brett and Cummins, and we've had a meeting out there and discussions. We've come to a, uh, a resolution that th there's a product that can be applied to the top of that tank that's going to eliminate the rust. We'll try to build up that product, product the best we can. And we've come up, come, came in with what I think is a reasonable solution. Mr. Sandman suggested that I uh, make sure that, that the warranty is not you know, violated, and, and I've got confirmation on that today in writing. So I'll be making a... Uh, recommendations of contractor and the owner, and um, hopefully we can get that item resolved. <coughs> Very good. Um, may, I com may I comment on that real quick, Steve? I'm sorry to interrupt you. At the last meeting, you authorized me to take action on their maintenance bond, mm -hmm. and I was prepared to do so because it expires uh, shortly. Right. But Steve was able to extract an extension of the maintenance bond for two more months. So I've written to Mike saying, I'm not gonna take action at this time so that we're still protected under the maintenance bond for the next 60 days after it expires. That's good. Okay. okay. Very good. And, and just two other, two other items that aren't on my report. I, I've been in communication with Tavistock uh, frequently, tw uh, two times since the last uh, committee meeting, and we scheduled a meeting out there, and I'm, I'm just going to walk, walk the project with them. Uh, the plans are complete. I, I just want to make sure I don't miss anything. Uh, I, I have a few items that I just want to discuss with them. And, and it's really the entrance way. There's really a dip in the road. And I, I want to show them how we could repair that. So I'll be meeting them with them tomorrow, late morning to review that. Um, once I get authorization, I'll be ready to put it out to bid. But we'll have to see what the timing is. 
terrific. And, and the last thing, Phil, if you need any help on the mapping, the FEMA mapping, we, we, we've done, we, we've been involved in a couple other communities. If you need any help, um, there's also, FEMA also has a website. If you type in either your block and lot or your street address, it, it will tell you if you're in a floodplain. So maybe that's something we want to get out there to the public too. But if you need any help with just reviewing the mapping, we could do that. That's great. Very good. Yeah. Thank you, Thank Steve. You. Township Committee, John. Yeah, just a couple things I want to touch on. Uh, I don't know how many folks from the township can remember the uh, boat parade they used to have at the head of the river and the boats lit up. It was a great, a great thing. I just want to, I'm very happy to announce that the Mays Landing Yacht Club will be hosting and presenting the Night of Lights this year, September 8th, on September 8th. Uh, and uh, it'll be, uh, the lineup will be at 6.30 at the bulkhead. Uh, and the parade starts at 7 o'clock. Uh, there's going to be prizes, first, second, and third place for the boats, one prize for best decorated uh, of the docks and houses that are going to participate also. So I think it's going to be very, uh, a very nice uh, addition of something we did in the past, and I'm glad to see this coming back. For more information on this, uh, you can go to the, uh, uh, on the web at info at mazelandingyachtclub.com and uh, it will give you more information about how you can participate if you live along the uh, waterway there and would like to be a participant or you just want to decorate your dock or, or, or uh, house or anything there. Uh, I, I'm really happy to see this uh, uh, coming back again. And this is being uh, spearheaded by Angel Merrill, uh, who was involved in Merrill's Tavern over there, Merrill's Restaurant. Uh, but please uh, think about taking part in this, or at least coming out and seeing it. It's going to be going to be a great event. Uh, also, uh, the Historical Society has asked me if we wouldn't uh, uh, drop a note in about the art in the park. Uh, it's a great event uh, held in the um, uh, park up at the corner here at uh, Main Street Memorial Park, and it's going to be on uh, September 15th, 10 to 4. Uh, they have some really great vendors at this uh, this event, and I think it's great if uh, you pass the word and we can get people out, and it'll help benefit the society, which needs uh, needs to get some vendors involved. Uh, it'll help them out a lot, also. And other than that, I'm happy to see progress uh, out at the uh, Benderson project, and you hear about the Outback Steakhouse, and things are starting to uh, move, uh, really move, and, and, and I certainly hope it keeps that up, but uh, I think it's going to be good for us to see those things happening. Uh, we're working, too, uh, with committee and Phil uh, to try to uh, get the people, the principals involved in the uh, old factory that's got burned out uh, to uh, get get to us with some more information about what they might be doing there. Hopefully we'll have some more light to shed on that in the meetings to come. And that's it. Thanks, Art. Thank you, John. Roger? Yeah, um, I just wanted to thank all the people who participated in the National Night Out uh, two weeks ago. I, I think um, we had a very healthy crowd there, probably maybe four, 5,000 people. And what always impressed me about it when you have it there is the uh, the number of people that come to it, and yet after it's over, how easy it is they get out of the area without incident. So I think it's a credit to uh, everyone involved and uh, a lot of the people who participated. People had a great time, um, and uh, it was a good night for it. Um, on Saturday, the uh, 11th, I attended the 143rd anniversary of the uh, disaster on the rails uh, train wreck in Mays Landing. I don't know if many of you know about it, but I've lived in this town for 35 years and I didn't find out about it until maybe a month ago. And I think it was through Carl Fowle who clued me in on it. Um, on August the 11th, 1880, uh, West Jersey train collided with another one over by the, uh, the trestle, killing approximately 50 people. And when you think about it, in this community at that time, you didn't have an Atlantic care. You didn't have any hospitals in the area. The rails ruled the roads. The only way of getting around was uh, buckboard and horse or uh, horseback. Uh, but what impressed me a lot about it was not the fact that a significant number of people were injured or even there were that many fatalities, 
the May's Landing, as it's cited in the newspaper, including the Wall Street Journal of the time, they really played a significant part in helping all the people who were injured. Think back to 1880. In the township, there are only 1,464 people, according to the 1880 census, that live in this township. <coughs> it may be 800 people that lived in May's Landing. The fact that they opened up their homes, the hotels opened up for this, I think is significant. Um, two people uh, that have been spearheading this is uh, Mari Detoli and Carl Farrell, and they're in the process of trying to raise money for the documentary they want to do about this. You know, it's really significant when, you know, people talk about the history of uh, different areas, whether it's the country, the state, the municipality. What was most interesting about this event was the papers <coughs> carried it for maybe a week, and then it no longer was news anymore. I think the rail companies wanted to hide this because they didn't want that type of negative publicity going out where people would read about it. But it's interesting, that played a, that's probably the single most largest disaster that has hit our township in all these years. And I think when you think back about it, think of what they had to deal with what they had to overcome. I don't even know if we had a, a police force. If we did, Chief, it had to be just a few people. And, you know, no emergency uh, rescue squad. Fire departments were probably real small, but everybody got involved in it. And I think it's a credit to the members of this community, <coughs> uh, whether it's past or even present looking forward, that the people in this township stepped up for this event. So I was very impressed with it. So many of you could go on to the website and look it up. The disaster on the West Jersey line it's, in a, it's a major uh, uh, train wreck that occurred in August the 11th, 1880. I think you'll find it very interesting. The other nice thing about it, it'll show you a lot of older significant pictures of this township, of what it looked like at the time. So you'll probably find it extremely interesting. So it was, it was good to meet all the people from, uh, <coughs> that they've stayed in touch with from St. Anne's uh, Literary Society. Uh, they were mostly all Irish uh, Catholics who uh, had traveled by train from Philly to Atlantic City. There were 1,800 people on that train, and, and there were 24 rail cars. So when you think about it, there was a lot of activity that went through this town when the rails were big. So I was just impressed with the whole thing, and I've been researching a lot of it now, and I'm, I'm a convert to it. So I, I, I'm happy to feel uh, happy to have been there to help them uh, uh, celebrate this event. In, in, in a way in which was very respectfully done. They even threw a wreath into the uh, river. And uh, I think uh, the people now, year after year, will probably uh, remember it. They're in a the process now of working with the county to put a monument down at the rail station. Uh, that'll, that'll signify what uh, date the accident occurred. <coughs> so I, I think it's pretty good to, uh, to read a little bit more about it. And I think it's an event that we shouldn't let die in this community people should maybe understand what happened and the fact that we see a lot of major accidents on our roadways, whether it's rail, airplane or not, something happened at that time in history that we were part of here. Thanks, Mel. Thank you, Roger. Rodney? Yeah, <clears throat> I'd just like to, to, uh, to echo what, what Roger said about it. I think actually it offers a great opportunity uh, maybe to attract some tourists if we could ever develop it. Uh, when you thank 50 people, uh, and particularly at that time, that's a lot. Today, today we have uh, aircraft airlines that, that travel hundreds of millions, even billions of miles without a single fatality, and yet we had a situation here where 50 people died. It, it, would, it would make a potentially a very interesting tourist uh, location, I think. Uh, I just wanted to echo Roger's uh, remarks about the National Night Out. It was really a, a, a fun event, uh, very well participated, a lot of uh, activities for kids. I think the kids had a, had a ball there, and I certainly want to thank our police department for the great job they did. Absolutely. I, think, I think their show may have been uh, the, the main feature there uh, with the dogs and everything else. Uh, there was also, uh, I want to say several helicopters. I know it was at least two. Uh, and uh, one of them was the Atlantic uh, Medical Care, or Atlantic Care's um, helicopter. I was struck by the fact that it's a beautiful helicopter, but you know, it was built in Europe. With all the helicopters we built here in the United States, and uh, the Coast Guard helicopters are built, built in France, and this was built in Europe. Um, 
It's a beautiful helicopter, though, and it was a very, uh, very nice uh, event. I attended uh, South Jersey Planning Office uh, Technical Activities Committee a workshop a few days ago, and uh, what they were talking about was a planning tool that's now available, uh, and it is open to anybody who can use it. Uh, it's a tool that can be used for planning transportation routes, uh, and in fact, it's going to be used by the Department of Transportation, but it can be used by anybody. Now, we were talking about this mapping here. It's a GIS-based system uh, that's going to incorporate as much as it can of available uh, uh, databases around the state. So it's going to have areas in need of redevelopment uh, available there. Uh, it's got uh, the lots uh, uh, available. It's got population densities. Uh, it's got all kinds of tremendous information, and I suspect that we here ourselves will probably find use for it, and I suspect that many of our, uh, our contractors, once they know about it, maybe even our planner here, uh, will find it useful. Once again, it is free. Uh, it's uh, sponsored by the Department of Transportation uh, and Rutgers. Rutgers is working on it, and it really seems like a very powerful tool. Um, I'm supposed to be sent uh, some information on the website and whatnot. As soon as I get it, I'll certainly uh, make it available. Thank you. Thank you, Rodney. Um, I had the pleasure of joining the folks out in Misba, Misba Community Day at the Lundy Community Building. It was a good time, had by all. Very warm, but they had some water activities for the kids. They had some basketball going on there and a lot of really good food. So I hope you had a chance to get out there and join them. Uh, it was a good time and it's a good way to showcase the community out there. I'd also like to say a few words about National Night Out um, and thank Chief Tapner and, uh, and his police department. Uh, but Chief told me when I was out there that um, as though he'd like to take all the credit, it's the folks at the uh, Hamilton Mall that do a lion's share of the work to put that on. <coughs> and uh, I want you to remember that the next time you uh, log online, um, that the store the mall could use your help. And if we start shopping in our own neighborhood and, and shopping at our own mall, um, you know, it's something that, uh, as you can see, the Shore Malls barely exist anymore. We're one of the few areas around that has this type of uh, luxury, uh, along with all the other stores in the area. If we, if we don't shop in our own neighborhood, uh, our neighborhood won't be here. So I want you to think about these are the folks that are reinvesting in your children, your time, making things nice for you. That was an outstanding event. It gets better every year. And I look forward to seeing it next year because it just is that incredible. I remember when we first started, we had a line of fire trucks and a couple of police cars, and now it's, it's unbelievable. It's very good, very well done, so thank you. Uh, I would like to open, the, open to public comment. Anybody in the public like to speak? Yes, sir. Thanks, Mayor Committee. Chief Tapper, he was around in the 1840s. <laughs> I was going to work with him for 25 years. I'm allowed to say that. I was going to say that, but I'm glad you did. <laughs> well, I'll let him take it out on me. Yeah. Uh, I just wanted to thank Mr. Risbridge for his very eye opening yes. presentation. And, um, you know, when, upon his completion, Mr. Sandman brings up a statute, a Title 40 statute. There is exceptions in that statute that committee can act on. I know you can't comment on it. But being a, a public servant for mm -hmm. 30 years now, um, safety and welfare, you, sidewalks. Um, you have the lake right there where, where folks can get hurt. You, you yes. have a, a, a commercial piece of property there with young children. I mean, many nights of the week. There, there, there are many things that I think that a committee could, could, you know, if you would give him permission, which I'm respectfully asking to look into, that maybe we can uh, do something prior to the October 23rd date. Thank you. Thank, Thank you for you your much. comments. Yes, sir. Okay. I'm Bob Ravel, 6526 Rundle Avenue. And if this were a social organization, this would come under the um, good of the order. And that's my intention here. I'm familiar. Uh, there's there is a, a property in Hamilton Township that's dear in, to all of your hearts. And it could be the greatest tax generator we have, tax generator we have. Unfortunately, I think it's being underutilized through no one's fault. But if I could 
just make a couple brief suggestions, uh, and I'll and I'll very be very parochial about it. Uh, the the firm that's represented the business park for many years, uh, referring to the sign on Hamilton on in front of the business park, benefits the uh, the uh, commercial realtor. All it says on it is whoever his name is and remain nameless here, property available. That benefits more than it benefits Hamilton Township. This township went to great effort to get tax abatements. We were working against, this township was working against UEZ zones in Pleasantville and Atlantic City. We went through very difficult periods, which Bob Salmon can attest to. Uh, there was a rise and fall of economic development. Uh, the stories were, were a little too far out. There were many reasons why folks didn't come to Hamilton Township Business Park. But I think that we have an opportunity now with growing economy to, to make that park what it really should be. And I'll, I'll make very, very uh, succinct suggestions. One, hire a local realtor, and two, come to mind. And you would know who they are because they're the people that move property in Atlantic County for Atlantic County, uh, not a firm from that's more interested in the land up around Voorhees and uh, the route, the route 92, or the route, you know, the, the area up around the, that area. Uh, I think we need to look right in Atlantic County to maximize the benefit of that park, and I think with that, we'll we'll receive the the benefit of not only employment, but the tax revenue. And as Bob will, uh, Bob will attest, uh, one of the things that we said years ago was that we would give the land away because we're more interested in getting the tax rateable and employment than the cost of the real estate. So if the Township Committee, whoever the liaison is for that, for the, for the Industrial Commission, uh, they're not to be faulted. Uh, they, they do everything they can, but I think they need some help from this committee to maybe give us a new impetus. And uh, they're my remarks. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you Agreed. very much. Anyone else? Move to close the public portion. Second. So motion and second. Close the public portion. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 All those opposed? The ayes have it. Motion to adjourn. Motion. Thank you. Second. A motion second to adjourn. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 All those opposed? The ayes have it. Thank you.